thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. I am so excited about this live video tonight. Hallelujah. I'm excited about Sister White singing. I'm excited about everything the Father in heaven is up to tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Sister Angel, God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister White, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Mm. Well, Jesus, glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Sister White, God bless you. I'm glad you could tune in tonight. God bless you guys. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited about the song we're going to sing tonight. And it's so important to know who we are in God and whose we are in God. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm we excited. are all children of the King. And we are, him, really. we're so blessed. And mm. he's just asking us to worship him in spirit and truth, to hold yeah. everything, everything we do up to that lens of truth. Yeah. To really investigate why we do things, how we do mm. things, and if they are truly in his will or not, even down to the very roots of everything. And it's, you know, we love our God. We want to serve him in spirit and truth. We want to yeah. walk that narrow road. You know, I often think about that the Red Sea crossing. You know, we were watching some videos of all the things they're now uncovering. Even the yeah. secular people that are now coming out with the underwater cameras and everything to show the coral Ooh. growing on the chariot wheels. Yeah. It says that God pulled the wheels off yeah. and it shows it. It shows Thank the you. wheels laying there next to the spokes, you know. Yes, it does. <laughs> and Thank and they you. argue about the dry land, and that Gulf of Aquaba has a clear path across it, and every on other sides of it, it's a drop off. That's that Ricky kept saying it. That's that narrow path God talks about. You've got to walk yeah. through the middle of the storms of this life and you've got a drop mm -hmm. off on either side that will lead you onto that wide path of destruction that everybody else wants to travel that is not yeah. Jesus. But that narrow road is not always easy and that narrow road requires being separate from the world. It's not like they mm -hmm. can point at you and you That's are involved in anything the world is involved in. You've got right. to be separate. Yes. Be mm, different. Be yes. It, it, Lord, yes, we're the odd the ones. Yes, we're the weird ones. Yes, we don't conform to everything the world does. <laughs> we're not man. supposed to. We are, we the are a peculiar the priesthood. Peculiar is the word he uses. Mm. That means different. That means not Strange. easily identified with everybody else. We're not we're not following what everybody else is doing. I mean, Jeremiah, when he came to the king, he mm. was the one telling the king the truth, the real message of God. But they would not listen to him because he didn't come with that prosperity gospel. Oh, don't mm. worry, king. You go on out there and do war. God's going to give you the victory. That is not what God said. Come he on. said, you tell that king he needs to humble himself yeah, yeah. to the Damn. king of Babylon. And then mm. he will be saved. 
But notice, yeah. all the way up to the end, he disobeyed. Even he fled the city to avoid the king coming in. And the mm, king yeah, captured him, took him to his city. He told him, you will not mm. even see it. Why? Because My the king Lord. of Babylon gouged his eyes out. First, before he did that, he killed all of his sons in front of him. Mm -hmm. Destroyed the whole bloodline. Yeah, and you know, I love what the king of Babylon said. He said, I don't want to offend anybody's God, so let's go ahead and take care of this man. Mm -hmm. And then he said, he's free Jeremiah. I mean, like everybody else will quit copying. But yep. Jeremiah, what's this? Jeremiah and the units were free. Yes. Those that came to the rescue of God's prophet were the ones that were set free from captivity. Not yep. the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. He walked in truth no matter what it cost him. I mean, in the end, that Come king on. had him thrown down in that well. Mm -hmm. You know? And he had to be rescued. And the eunuch is the one who rescued him. Yep. Now, isn't that Amen. something? So here it is. So they knew that these people that rescued him knew the truth of God because they could see it. They could see mm -hmm. the truth. Look, even now in our lives, we see the truth unfolding around us. Look, God is yeah. not about to create this prosperous thing again. The end is here. The mm. end Amen. of this world Amen. is here. Everything in Second you know, Timothy right. three one through five is happening. Go if you want to really see if it's the last days. That's all you have to look at. I had somebody you argue know. with me at work. How do you know it's the last days? I said, okay, open this. I took my Bible out. I went mm -hmm. to Second Second Timothy three one through five. I said, read that to me, and they read you it know. to me. I said, what of all of this do you not see happening right now? Uh -huh. And they said, none of it. I said, what does it say? It says, know this in the last days. Mm -hmm. Mockers, That's scoffers. Right. And you know, let me, show you, let me show you something. I know that a lot of people say, well, you know, we've seen that for years. But we've never seen it with this intensity that we are seeing it now. There's an escalation of it as the yes. return of the Messiah is closer now than he's ever been before. He's closer now than he was five minutes ago from coming again. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we'll just be excited because I'm telling you what, if we ain't excited, something's wrong, you know? Yes. There, was, there was a minister that led my uncle to faith in Christ, and she said at his home going, she said, if your mind is not constantly focused on him, then you're still bound to this earth. Amen. That I was 13 years old, and that stuck with me. That hit me like an, an, an axe, depending on because I'm going to say that. It was like an arrow in the heart for me. And I stuck with that. It, it stuck within me. If my eyes are not focused on heaven, then I'm still attached to this world. Yes. Now, I mean, we have our life and we have our cares of this life, but you know what? We shouldn't be weighed down. Right. The of this life. Amen. I'm going to shut up and let you sing when I'm going to sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once I was crucified in the rhymes of my sin, yes, wretched and poor, yes. lost in lost lonely in within, but mm. with wondrous mm. compassion, the King mm. of all kings. In pity and love took me under his wings. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows through my veins. And I, who was wretched 
sing and poet now can sing. Praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the King. Now I'm a child with a heavenly home. My holy Father, well, he made me his own. And I am washed by his blood and I'm clothed with his love. And so Someday I'll sing with the angels above. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows through my veins. And I, who was wretched and poor, now can see. Praise God, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I thank you, Father, for the gift you've given us for worship and for bringing your spirit into a new place. Lord God, I thank you for bringing your spirit into the midst of us. Father, I thank you that the camera is not going to fall that even the spirit of the enemy become silent by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I just thank you that You've got me and Sister White here tonight, Lord. I just thank you for anointing her voice and for thank you, Lord, for just healing and delivering people who she was singing and letting them know that they are a child of the King, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to move tonight, even upon your word, which is already anointed. I just ask you to anoint my lips that they may be able to speak your holy words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister White. God bless you. Amen. Glory to God. I'll have you another song this week sometime. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Aren't, aren't you just glad that Sister White came and sang in the service today? Don't you love her? God bless her, Lord, and her husband, Ricky. I just love them. They're amazing, wonderful people in God. Amen. Christopher, God bless you. Brother Daniel, God bless you. Eugene, God bless you. Diane, God bless you. Everybody tuning in, God bless you. I love you in the name of Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sister Vanessa, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So I'm going to entitle the message of this broadcast tonight, Bring It to the Throne and Leave It Alone. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Bring it to the throne and leave it alone. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, glory, Lord. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, the 19th chapter, verse 14, and we're going to read till the Lord tells us to stop. Amen. Glory, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger and read it, and Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Now, you notice what he did. Hezekiah, not only did he respect God. Now, this is interesting. All right, y'all. Hezekiah respected the Lord. 
He's the one that was responsible for bringing back the feast. He was the one that was responsible for bringing back the holy days and for getting rid of the idols in the house of God. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. But look at this. Let's honor the Lord for this. He was a wise enough king to know I'm not the one who can do anything about this. So I'm going to take the matter. The king said, I'm going to take the kingly matter to the king of kings. Glory to God. He said, I'm going to take it to somebody that can do something about it. Somebody better shout, take it to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And let me tell you why you can take it to Jesus. Like Sister White just saying, praise God. Bless God. Praise God. I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows through my veins. I'm excited about that, that I'm a child of the King. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know this world is not your home? Amen. Glory to God. I'm preparing for heaven every day. My eyes are focused on Jesus like Brother Lennon Ravenhill preached. He said, I live every day with eternity in sight. If your eyes ain't focused on eternity, honey, you're still attached to the world. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, I know we got our own lives in this world, and we get sometimes caught up in the moment. But you know what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, we are supposed to. He, he says, seeing that we are surrounded about by such a great cloud of witnesses. He said, let us run the race. Glory to God. Casting off every weight and that sin that so easily beset us. So there's some things that weigh us down that really aren't sin. We just got issues in our spiritual tissues. We got issues in life where things get to troubling us, things on the job, people around us, whatever. We've got things weighing us down that are not necessarily sin. Do you hear what I'm preaching? But they're, they're hindering your walk with God, but not totally destroying your walk with God. And anything that is hindering you needs to be cast off before it becomes a sin. Help me, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory, Lord. Amen. That's what Evangelist Preston said the other day. He said, there is some things that we just need to cast off that are not really sin. They're just burdens. They're just things that are weighing us down. And why should we cast them off? Well, there's two reasons. One, the Bible said, cast all your cares for he cares for you. Cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. That's the most important right there. Cast all your cares on him, all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Watch this, okay? Once you've cast your cares on him, the enemy has not got you distracted no more. What do you mean, Brother HR? It says the enemy is as a roaring lion going throughout the world looking for anyone he can devour. And he said, so cast your cares on Jesus for he cares for you. If you've got your cares and you're focused on your cares, then when the enemy comes staring you down like the devil he is, you, Lord have mercy, glory to God, you've got one of two choices. You can either give it to Jesus or you can just carry it on and it'll end up devouring you. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but I feel the Holy Ghost on this broadcast tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Kevin, God bless you. I love you, brother. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. But now check this out. Let's get back into the scripture. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. But he laid it out before the Lord. 
verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. So he had somebody come into his life that gave him a negative word. There is positive prophecy and negative prophecy in the world. We get a word. And, and, and let me tell you something. You are not under any obligation to receive a prophecy God did not give you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Because, yes, the devil can prophesy things to your life. The devil can speak into your life. But let me tell you something. How many of you know he ain't worthy? I'm telling you, I am a king's kid. I am a son of God. My name has been changed from Mephibosheth to a new name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says that I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am a son of God. Now, let me explain something to you. I'm not the son, but I'm a son. And God, the way he works, God the Father has got it so perfectly planned out that even a daughter is a son. Are you hearing me? The Bible said, for those that believed, gave he them the power to become the sons of God. Even a daughter is a son in the eyes of God. Because let me tell you something. It's sonship. It's family. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. It's not about a religion. If it was about a religion, any religion in the world could do it for you. But it's about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Jesus went down into that watery grave and rose up, the waters parted over Mary's boy, and the brassy heavens opened up, and the Father spoke and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Jesus at that moment had not cast out one devil, had not healed one sick person, had not raised one person from the dead, but yet he was being identified not for his calling, but for his character. He was being identified as God in flesh, God's only son. He was being identified for his essence, not for his accomplishments. Somebody say that's a good word. Somebody say that's a good word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus was not being identified for his accomplishments. He was being identified for his essence and in truth, his character. Because what is the first thing Satan came after when he sees Jesus in the desert, God in flesh. He come for God's flesh. He came for God's character. Because see, the enemy ain't never after your calling. He's after your character. Because if the enemy can take your character, he can take your calling. He can take that anointing so easily out of your life because your character's messed up. If you're not walking the way, hey, Pastor John, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not walking right before God and you're living a double life in the church, you don't even try to change. There ain't no change in your game. You still on the same team with the same players. And you ain't letting Jesus coach your life. But yet I'm a Christian. I'm going to church. You're still sitting on the bleachers and God don't even know you and the whistle is about to blow and the buzzer is about to The buzzer is about to go off in the spirit and when it does, the game is up. The game is going to be over. The trumpet of God is the buzzer. The buzzer is going to sound. The dead in Christ, those that were redeemed and waiting 
on the Lamb of God, those that were belonging to God and tried their very best to serve him are going to be caught up together with the Lord in the air. We're going to be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But let me ask you tonight, what team are you on? Help me, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Because like Pastor Clint Brown said one time, there's power in a bounce back. God's got a great bounce back in mind for you. Quit living on the sidelines of your character because God's calling you to live greater than how you're living. God's called you to design you to think greater than the way you're thinking. Glory to God. I'm here to tell somebody by the Holy Ghost of God, if you'll change your thinking, God will change your character. Somebody give Jesus some praise. Somebody share this word tonight. Well, help me, Holy Ghost. I feel the presence of God all over me tonight. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I feel the Lord Jesus coming all over me tonight. Hallelujah. His presence is on me tonight in a new way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. I'm trying to stop what I'm doing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to shut my mouth and just go ahead and read, but the Lord is taking over and I'm excited because you're understanding the word of God. But look at this. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubs, thou art the God, even thou alone, of the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Stop right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I sure did. I <laughs> Amen. I heard the train horn blow three times. I was preaching about the whistles about to blow. Glory to God. I'm going on that heavenly train. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Woo! Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Woohoo! Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Look at this. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. He didn't take it to his officials. He didn't take it to the guards. He took it to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. It, it said, Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the two cherubs. <laughs> Amen. All aboard. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Where did he put? Mm, where did he put the letter of blasphemy that came against God? In the presence of God, he put it. He put it on the mercy seat. He put it before the Lord, and he said, the Lord who dwells among the cherubs, the mercy seat where God made his judgments. God stood there in that place and said, I'm still on the throne, Hezekiah. Don't worry, I'm right here for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And then he tells God what the king had said. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear, open, Lord, thine eyes and see. Sometimes we think God can't hear us, and surely sometimes we don't think God sees us, but the whole time he's there, he hears and he sees. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. It says... He began to talk to God, and he says, Open your eyes, open your ears, Lord. And hear the words of Sennacherib, Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God, to belittle the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their land. Remember, now watch that. He said, 
they've destroyed their nation. They have destroyed the nations and their lands. They've destroyed their own lands. The Bible says every kingdom that is come against itself is brought to desolation. Amen. Glory to God. How can Satan cast out Satan? Are you hearing what I'm preaching? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. The kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their own lands and have cast their gods, little g, into the fire, for they were no gods. But the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. Just like in Isaiah 37 and 19, Jeremiah 10, 30, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 10, 3 through 5. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what it's talking about. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou, you, art the Lord God, even thou only. Then Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, his pastor, had no idea of what had went on before God and the king with the mercy seat. That's going to be important in just a moment, all right? Mark that down. He was in the mercy seat. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Somebody say the king got to the mercy seat. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Then Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sincarib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin daughter of Zion hath despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached? Who have you belittled and who have you think you're blaspheming? And against whom hast thou exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on high, even against the Holy One of of Israel. Jessica, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. By the messengers thou hast reproached, you belittled the Lord, and hast said with the multitude of my chariots, I am come up on the height of the mountain, the mountains, to the side of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees, therefore, and the choice fir trees, therefore, and I will enter into the lodgings of his borders and into the forest of his Carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of besieged, besieged places. He said, my feet. He said, my feet have I, with my, the sole of my feet, the sole of God's foot. Glory to God. That gives you a whole nother revelation of the part of the Red Sea, don't it? People <laughs> preach, well, God's hand moved the sea, but it's, oh, shut up about Koshi. God put his foot down. Hey, hallelujah. The day God put his foot down and moved the sea for him. Glory to because remember the book of Psalms said he rides out on every storm. Amen. He has placed his foot on the earth. Because the Bible said the kingdom, that heaven is his throne, my God, and the earth is his footstool. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. We are amazed at the hand of God. But what about the foot of God? Glory to God. But let me tell you something, honey. You better hope that God never shakes the dust from his garment with your life because we're all dust on the earth. And the Bible says, and I believe it's in Zechariah or Zephaniah, it mentions how, it mentions how God is going to shake the dust loose from off his garment. 
The time's coming. The dust, the dead skin, the dead life that's been in your life, if you've not repented and you're still dead in your trespass and you're trying to hold on to the garments of God at the same time, you're living a dead life of religion and you're still holding on to the garments of God at the same time, saying, I'm going to church, I love the Lord, but there's no change in your life. God, my friend, will shake the dust on that day from his garment. And the Bible says, yes, I know that it's God that will do the discipline. Yes, I know it's God that will send the judgment, but I'm here to tell you by the Holy Ghost of God, that this is why we warn people. This is why we do these live stream broadcasts, because of one reason. We know the fury of God that is coming. So we try to persuade men to repent of their sins. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me ask you this. Did you know that God said we are his ambassadors as though he were making his appeal through us? That's interesting. Did you know that an ambassador in a time of great trial and great trouble is called out? The Laodicea, they're caught up before all hell breaks loose. Let me tell you, all these movies are left behind and everything. They ain't got a handle yet on the horror and the hell that is coming to the earth when God lifts his hand of grace and he calls his body home. Ooh, Let me tell you something, my friends. When God lifts that veil of blood, that veil of grace from off of this earth, the restraining force, the church, is going to be removed. I can prove to you that the church is the restraining force. How come? The Bible says that when God wanted to destroy his own people because he was sick and tired of them, he said they won't repent. They go in right back into the same garbage. The Bible said Moses stood in God's way. It said that he said, Lord, if you will not forgive them, take my name out of your book. He said, I'd rather go to hell than to serve a God that would go back on his word. That brother literally put his own soul on the line for over 6,000 people. More than that, it was like a million at that time over a, around a million people they were standing at the very thresholds of hell and moses said to god i'm too old to start over again and if you're going to leave these people you called me to lead you might as well let me go to hell with them and god said because you have said this I'll remember my covenant with Israel. I will save my people. I will not turn my back on them. But that man put his soul on the line. And that's another thing. People preach all the time, well, you can't lose your salvation, Brother HR. Really? How come God was considering what Moses told him when Moses said, if you're going to be that way, take my name out of your book. God said, if you add or take away from this word, I'll take out your name from the book of life and add to you the plagues that are written in the book. He said, for those that endure to the end, he said, I'm not going to blot out their name. So for your name to be blotted out, it must first be written in. Eternal security is a dangerous doctrine. Because the way the Lord wants the church to hear it is this. You can't lose your salvation if you're truly following Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. 
Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. And he said, they know me, and I, they follow me, and I give them everlasting life. You can't lose your salvation if you're following Jesus Christ. But if you choose to walk your own path, if you choose to go your own direction, the name that was once written in can be blotted out. I'm, I'm treading very tenderly here because the Lord just totally shifted the message on me. I, he, he don't do this all the time to me. And I'm all right with it. I ask him, I say, Lord, whatever you want to do, just do it. As Pastor Trina said today, be it unto me, Lord. Pastor Katrina said, be, be it unto me. Do whatever you will with me, Lord. So I'm actually just, <laughs> I'm throwing out the notes tonight. I'm, I'm not going to preach any further from my notes. The Lord is just leading me from his heart tonight. And the Holy Spirit just completely took over, and I give him the glory and the honor and the praise Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Father. I don't know about you, my friends, but I feel the precious Holy Spirit right now coming over me in this broadcast tonight. I feel his glory tugging at people's hearts. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You can't live at both sides of the fence. You're either for God you're against him you're either going to follow God or you're going to follow yourself right into the footsteps of hell it's time out for playing games in the body of Christ we have got to make a decision choose ye this day whom you will serve the God of your fathers before the flood demons fallen angels you can read about that in the book of Enoch. Or the God of your fathers in whose land you now, the God of the Bible or the God of the Chaldeans in whose land you're now dwelling. You're following gods and you're following little g. You're following little g. You're following fallen angels and fallen doctrines. And you're not following God. And he says, if you aren't careful, it will cost you your life. It will cost you your eternal life. We have got to truly surrender to Jesus Christ if we're ever going to make heaven our home. If we're going to follow Jesus Christ. And the Bible said we, we must follow Jesus Christ. Joshua said, as for me and my house, he said, y'all can serve them false gods all you want to. He said, but as for me and my house, we made up our mind. We're going to serve the Lord. And do you know Joshua was in his hundreds when he took the battle of Jericho? Don't tell me you're too old or you're too young. The Bible said when Jeremiah was a young pup, the Bible says a young lad, a young child, that God called for him to do a great work. Samuel was a young child when God called him to do a great work. Another king in the Bible was 12 years old and God called him to do a great work. Don't tell me you're too young or you're too old. Moses was 80 years old when he stood before Pharaoh and declared, let my people go. Jesus. <laughs> Somebody better hear me, what I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Look at Moses' life. The first 40 years of his life, he was living in Egypt. He was living it up. Then he realized who he was. And then after he realized who he was, he went and he found a wife in the desert. Check this out now. Zipporah. And... He married her, but yet now I, I ain't going to get into all that. That's a whole different ball game, a whole different subject. But what I want you to know is he went to 
he, he went and got married in the wilderness. And the Bible says that as he was married to her, for 40 years he served his father Jethro, father-in-law Jethro. He's now 80. And God says, go back to your people, my people, and tell them I'm getting them ready to go out of Egypt. I'm getting ready to bring them out. I'm exiting them out. There's an exodus. There's an exit coming for them. So they get to the exit. In the last 40 years, God uses Moses to lead them. First, First 40, he's living his life leading his own people, but he's leading them as a, a bad leader. He's leading them in slavery. Next 40, he's running from his life for his life. The next 40, there he is again, back with his people. And the last 40 years of his life, 120 years of his life was spent leading from birth to death. He led the people. That is one big reason Satan came looking for the body of Moses at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the book of Jude, the brother of Jesus. Why? Because Satan wanted to make a mausoleum. He wanted to make a place of memorial for Moses and make Moses look like a god because he got up during the resurrection. Come on, somebody. You will never find the body of Moses on this side of heaven because let me explain something to you. One, God buried him himself. And after the resurrection of the Son of God, God in flesh, got up, Moses got up with him. How do I know this? Because Moses was on the mountain of transfiguration with him. See, let me tell you something right now. God told him because of your flesh, you can't go into the promised land. But let me tell you something. He died in a promise of a promised land. And let me tell you what happened. God took his spirit where his flesh never could go. His flesh could not go into the promised land, but his spirit got to step foot on the mountain. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that his resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus, that many of the saints that were asleep, got up and was seen by everyone. And they went and preached. They went and lived for God on, and, and preached his word until the Lord says, it's time to go home. And he took captivity captive. He led them home to heaven. I don't know except this. Like Paul said, I claim to know nothing except Christ and him crucified. This is what I honestly believe they preached. He fulfilled it. It's finished. He fulfilled the law. I believe they all went down the streets of Jerusalem declaring Jesus Christ said it, and he is it. He is the fulfillment of the law, like me and Sister Tanya was talking about last night. He, he, they were quoting to him the law of Moses and Jesus said, I am the law of Moses. Glory to God. On the chosen, he said it, but in the Bible, he said it too. He said, I am the law of Moses. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. If you're lost or you're backslid, I want to encourage you tonight to come to Jesus. You're tired of playing games. You want to know who you are in God and whose you are. I invite you now to the altar of grace. See, this is what the Bible says. We can come boldly before the throne of grace, making our petition known that we would receive help in time of trouble. If you're lost or you're back, said you pray this prayer to me now. Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died upon the cross, that Father God, you raised Jesus from the dead, and I am alive in you as he lives in me. I believe he died on the cross, that you raised him from the dead, and that he is alive and alive forevermore. Wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. 
that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. I love you. God bless you. I declare healing. I declare deliverance. Father, fill everybody up with the Holy Ghost and fire, even a fresh touch of fire in the Holy Ghost right now. Roshe Marakasamai. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord. Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification for more videos just like this on YouTube. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.